number seven. The uh, wind is really messing with the audio. I'm going to try to do this real quick. This is my setup for making uh, arrows, and this video will be about making shoots, arrows out of wood shoots, uh, natural shoots. Um, but I do want to set, start by showing you my setup. Now this is a uh, this is a spine tester and my grain scale, and uh, what this does is it measures the deflection of the arrow shaft when you put a two pound weight on the middle after suspending it on these two pedestals. Now I'm not going to go into the uh, details of how to use it, but I do want to show you the, uh, the scale. Now seven years ago this thing cost me about 150 bucks, and this is why I bought it. The scale here. Now these are the uh, the spans between the pedestals. These are the pedestals here. This is not the uh, the length of the arrow. So this is a 24 inch span. This is a 26 inch span. And this is the deflection in inches. Now let's say for example you have you put a uh, shaft on there and you get a half inch deflection, 0.5 inches. If you've got the pedestal set up for a 24 inch span, that arrow is going to be good for a 40 pound bow. A 0.5 inch deflection is good for a, about a 40 pound bow, uh, maybe a little bit more than 40 pounds. And uh, if you have the span set up for 26 inches, you have an arrow that's good for a 50 pound bow. So that's a good rule of thumb to go by. Half inch, that's good for a 50 pound bow if you get it on a uh, 26 inch span. Now the 26 inch span, again, is not the length of the arrow. Uh, it is the distance between the pedestals. And the 26 inch span is good for 28 inch long arrows. So if you have a 28 inch draw and a 50 pound bow, look for deflection about a half an inch. That's a good rule of thumb. The, uh, the less the deflection, the higher the poundage of the bows, obviously. And the more deflection, the weaker the bow. Now there are scales and charts online that go over all that. I'm not going to go into that too deep right here, but uh, I just wanted to show you that. Now these are uh, a collection that I have of um, shoots that I sanded down to about the same diameter, and the same length, cut them all to the same length. These are a little bit more than 22 inches long, and uh, they're for Native American style arrows. But I, I kept these as reference just so I can see the different wood types and compare them just to get, get myself an idea of what these different woods weigh and what the deflection is. Now this first one here is red osier. Deflection of 0.43 inches, 272 grains. Yopon Holly, 404 grains, 0.41 inch deflection. Chinese privet. Sparkleberry, birch. Now the deflection on this one is 0.69 inches, which is unusual. Uh, this is a very weak piece of birch. Uh, birch is more like privet. Uh, sourwood. I'm not sure that's in focus. Hazelwood. Dogwood, I'm not sure which type. It really doesn't matter. Um, and the reason why I say that is because when you're building your set of arrows, you don't have to have all of the uh, the arrow material the same species of tree. You can mix and match as long as the weights are similar 
and the uh, deflections are similar. For the, they don't even have to be the same diameter. As long as the deflection and weights are similar, they can be used in a matched set of arrows. This is black cherry, 426 grains, 0.39 inch deflection. Another species of dogwood. So the uh, the main point of, of this exercise when I did it was to figure out how different these wood species are from each other, and it, it's really not that different. Well, they're not that different from each other. Um, I've got some natural wood shoots here. Just want to give you an idea of what these look like. Uh, these all still have the bark on. They're all different species. This is sparkleberry. This is black cherry. Hazel. Um, this is privet. Dogwood. Yopon holly. Uh, sage. And uh, privet. Now you can you can spend a lot of time and energy researching and becoming very good at identifying trees by the bark, uh, especially in winter when there's not many leaves. You have to depend upon uh, the bark to tell you what species. Um, but it's really not that important to know what species of tree you're using. Just look at for the basic characteristics. Straight between uh, three eighths and a half inch at the bottom. Make sure there's not too many branches on them. And uh, there's an example I have here that I want to show you. Uh, and show you how the identifying by bark can drive you crazy. These uh, two pieces here are, uh, they look very different, but they're the same tree. The bark looks very different. And if you were trying to identify the uh, tree by the bark, I don't know about you, but it would drive me nuts. So I don't, I don't concern myself too much about identifying the, the tree species. I just look for the general characteristics of the shoot. Can it be made into an arrow? Sure. Either one of these can be made into an arrow. Very long length without the uh, without any branches. Plenty long enough for arrows. And I don't even know what this is. I just cut this from my yard. Uh, a couple months ago and uh, I would just try that and see how they work the best way I feel I found the easiest way is to just experiment uh, just harvest a bunch of shoots and whichever ones that work out after after you dry them are the ones you use for arrows it's simple as that transform one of these uh, shoots, one of these gnarly crooked shoots into something like this. Uh, but yeah, I'll do that in the next video. That's it.